It's this old beaten path. See a little dotted line? Mm-hmm. It might be a dry, that's a dried up creek bed. Mm -hmm. That's where you want. Mm. So it just kind of reminded me of how this video is going to go with um, prepping. Mm -hmm. uh, one good thing is knowing your surroundings and where you're able to hunt and for, or forage for food just in case that you need it to, right? Yeah. And you, he's got this little map, this app that he uh, monitors everywhere he goes. He puts different color X's on the places just to kind of, I don't know how he does it. He's very smart in the area, but he's just a trapper kind of like. Well, you, you scout and find food source and water source and, and go from there. And then you mark it on your thing. That way if you, you know, of course we do it now for our, our meat and all, but um, in, in a crisis situation, you'll know exactly where to go because you've already walked miles and miles, you know, where the water source is, the food source, and things yep. like that, right? Yep. So there's a little creek bed, too. It comes from the main road. Right. You get to that creek bed. If they got water and they got food, you can find deer. Yeah. Good afternoon, you two family. We hope you all are having a wonderful day. I'm going to be throwing up some quick videos just to kind of go on, go over some prepping techniques or just some just give you a little bit of knowledge i'm sure that there are plenty of channels out there that you can get information from but we just kind of want to bring it from a simplified perspective i guess and so i'm um, we're going to be talking about some things that you could store up um just something that you can grab in case of an emergency or other situations and we will get into that and talk about that I guess the first thing I would want to say is know where your food food source is just like Leon was showing me he just got back from hunting and he was showing me on his map diff different things and explaining some things so um, if you don't have a husband or a boyfriend that's a hunter maybe get in with some people who know that uh, you know trade this that and the other know how to hunt and gather food that's that's for more of a uh, extreme case, I guess. I don't know. When we moved here, we were able to get some internet. So Leon and I had more things that we were able to watch on TV. And so we come across a bunch of documentaries and all because when we lived in Philadelphia, we didn't have internet. So we had to buy DVDs off of Amazon and watch series and things. But we come across a couple of series that were very interested in me. One was the Survivor series, not the one where they walk around naked. It's the other one. It's it's an old, old Survivor series. I thought it was very interesting putting a group of people out there that had to survive and the things that they ate that they said that they would never eat. And so, uh, yeah, we'll be talking a little bit about that too. Food, what you would not normally eat or what you're learning about food nowadays, you would, you've, you've purged out of your ca cabinets and things like that maybe keep a few of those items just in case because in a situation you're going to eat it trust me you will eat it so we are about to run to walmart and um look at the shelves and if you because we've been prepping and stocking up for a long time y'all so we're pretty well stocked up so we're not going to buy gorges of stuff because we're still going through a lot of what we stocked up right yeah we just maybe replace some stuff that we had used up but other than that we should be good for a year and a half at least right the last time. exactly and this is not a scare tactic this has just become normal for us right yeah it's just normal for us that we don't get scared and y'all the food that we have stocked up over the years and then we keep rotating and replenishing of course has has helped us out in hard times and not only that we were able to be able to be a blessing to other people in hard times as well. Okay. So it is a win-win. It's not, you know, it, it just becomes a lifestyle. And I know that there are different types of preppers and all, and I think we're maybe more, you know, we're on the lower. We don't go all, to me. Don't go overboard with it. Right. But have, have be sensible enough to think about what could happen. Not what will happen but what could happen you know, and 
that's even with medications and your daily activity, everything you use during the day, all day, every day. I'm um, home. So the 2024 elections coming up, and I think it was what next Tuesday. A week from tomorrow. Yes. A week from tomorrow, and so you know, you just want to be aware. You just want to be cautious. You know, in some areas around the world, or you know, in the United States, it may be a little bit challenging to get out. Of course, you know, you just never know what's going to happen. And some areas in different states um, are a little bit more calmer than other areas, or just chaotic, right? Yeah, a lot of other states. Most just never know. Some of the northern states, a lot of chaos. Chaos could get worse. I think it could be a little chaos. It doesn't matter the outcome of the election. Mm -hmm. So just be prepared and don't get caught in a situation to where you have to go out and buy food. Out. Exactly. And yeah. You know, and it, God, it's not saying that don't go out and buy food. In a worst case scenario, in a crisis, you are limited your outings yeah of, and to assure yourself of that is prep a little bit or off your daily needs that you need put it back yeah um, so even though we Leon and I both eat a little bit better we still don't follow all the rules and I don't know if we ever will because a lot of the products that we buy to put on the shelf, um, can, you know, can stay on the shelf for a long time because I guess some of the ingredients they, they put into it. So while it is good to watch what you eat, I mean, you know, you have to stock up things that are gonna last on the shelf for a long time. We're just gonna go down some of the aisles that we go down all the time when we are stocking our shelves. And, and this aisle is one of them where you get your cashews and your peanuts and things like that. Also your raisins and um, things that you, I put this in my oatmeal and oatmeal cookies. With the nuts, they say has a, about a six month shelf life, but I have kept mine on over a year and they were fine. The raisins have a longer shelf life. And so um, you can pretty well stock up on these. With these two products, you do want to do your own research and uh, how to properly store them, though. We are so thankful that now we have chickens that we do not have to pay these outrageous prices for eggs, uh, for the caged eggs. They're, I think it's four seventeen right there, but for the other eggs, the whitewashed eggs, they're even as expensive as well. But you can do so many things with eggs, you guys. Another product that we like to stock up on is our coffee. We do have coffee stored, lots of it, and coffee is shelf stable for two years, but I've had it longer, you guys, so you have to use your own judgment with that. Peanut butter is another item that I like to keep stocked up, and it has, I think it is shelf stable for a couple years as well. And of course, all of these products that I'm showing you, I've kept well over that, but you have to use your own judgment. Honey is shelf stable forever. We have worked with these products that I am showing you and very confident in our experience that they will not go bad or they haven't gone bad for us the way we store them and, and the environment that we put them in. We have never had a problem with them storing them well over two years, well over two years. Grits and oatmeal is a must have in our stock pantry. You cannot go wrong with grits if you don't know what it is. It is just a, a byproduct or of corn. And you can do so much with grits. You can eat them for lunch and dinner and will fill you up very fast. So we're showing you things that we still buy. It's nothing new. It's just line up on line up, precept on precept, right? That's it. Same old, same old. Cornmeal is a must. Uh, we also have Amish corn kernels, a five gallon bucket that we can make our own cornmeal. But cornmeal, flour, uh, even though it's, uh, some say it's shelf stable, depending on how you package it, 
I have seen some people store it up for seven years. I have not that long. Two years is the maximum. However, sugar can be stored for 20 plus years. So that is a no brainer on that. We have three five gallon buckets of this type of sugar. And yes, the price, this is a 10 pound bag for 817. Still reasonable to go ahead and at least get one five gallon bucket stored up. And I cannot stress enough about seasonings. While we were watching that Survivor movie, you can use seasonings to brighten up any dish. If it's just corn and beans that you're able to eat with some tuna fish, seasonings can be a game changer. Vinegar, apple cider vinegar, all of you are aware that that is um, a necessity on your shelf. We do not eat a lot of these oils, you guys, anymore. We have gone to the better oils, and if you are watching the news, you will see why, because oils are not like they used to be. They are adding all kind of ingredients, but yeah, we went to the better oils. I'm just right here showing you the fruit, how we have ours stocked up. We paid 99 cents, so it is a little bit more expensive, of course, but um, canned fruits, are, you're wise to stock some of them up. I do not have rice aroni stocked up, y'all, but that is, I do have some jambalaya, however, stocked up. Even though I do the homemade jambalaya, um, that box jambalaya will sit on the shelf for a long time. I'm just showing you these products. Um, you know, I mean, if you can't afford um, certain things, you could just always grab some of those prepackaged, cheap, um, <laughs> shelf-stable items and store those up. Beans, you know beans are very important to us. We have gallon, five gallon buckets of those stocked up. Also seasoning, just all kind of seasoning. You, and this right here, I have a lot of this stocked up. If you're not, if you run out of flour and you need to make a gravy, this right here, I would get some of this. And then of course your canned goods. Oh, the corn is 50 cents a can. Wow, 50 cents a can. We don't need any though, but that's not bad. 50 cents a can, that's not bad. 64 cents for the... Uh... Yeah, I'll get y'all some canned goods. There is so much you can do with corn. You can put it in Mexican cornbread, taco soup. I mean, endless, endless. You can look up some recipes online and print you out some, put them in a folder and just get you some canned goods. Peas. I mean, unless you have mastered the gardening, which we have not, get you some peas as well. Uh, you can add a little sugar to this, all kind of ways you can spruce that up. Also get you some quick protein. We have so much of this stored up, y'all, and I use it. I'll use it and make a quick chicken salad sandwich, or I have even put it in chicken and dumplings for a quick chicken and dumplings. We have tons of this, y'all, and whether you approve or not, we have tons of this. You just never know. And, of course, y'all know that we have tons of uh, tuna fish. I don't even see any. Well, here's some. Is that tuna fish? No, that's chicken breast. I don't know where the tuna fish is. And also spam. Leon doesn't like spam, but because um, <laughs> he ate so much of it as a child, I think. But you can also take this spam, put half and half in ground meat, and make your hamburgers just to kind of give it that mm taste. Or you can put it on the shelf. It lasts a long time, y'all. Here's the tuna fish. There's plenty, plenty of tuna fish and we have tons of tuna fish. We do eat a lot of tuna fish too. You can put that also in different types of meals, y'all. So much you can do, but just put it on the shelf. There is so many dishes that you can make with pasta. Shrimp pasta, uh, throw you some ground meat in there. Uh, endless recipes that you can use pasta for. Uh, spaghetti, noodle salad. Here's more seasoning, y'all. 32 cents. One thing that Leon and I found very interesting on that Survivor movie was they were always trying to find ways to um, taste. Their, all they had was rice and beans, so they're always trying to find ways to change the taste. 
these can sit on the shelf forever y'all get you some of these or the big container that I showed you so many seasonings look brown gravy just put it in your cabinet <laughs> you may not ever need it but you may all kind of seasonings did you know you can make your own hamburger helper hmm. you can make your own hamburger helper homemade yeah. I've done it before it's good yeah. I like to eat, make my taco seasoning out of this. I have some at home, but I'm going to go on and grab another one, y'all. Also, y'all, uh, tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes. Unless you have a huge garden and you can process your own tomatoes, we are totally stocked up in this, these products. Yes. And use them every week. Mayonnaise, mustard, ketchup, unless you know how to make your own. And there are plenty of videos to teach you how to make it. But, I mean, you know, I started getting the more healthier kind. But, um, yeah, I still have a lot of this stored up, y'all. And I'm going to continue to store it up. Olives. Leon doesn't like olives. Black olives. Pickles. Yep. Put this on the shelf. Store it up. It's kind of expensive. 172 good night but still and all if, if you that's a food that you like and you want to make sure you have enough of it you know you can get a couple a week okay, so we are home youtube family and i didn't show you what we bought because we are going to be going through this cabinet soon and it's going to be fun because if there is any closet in our house that i like to organize clean out it is going to be this one it is to me this is my, I don't know, I just I just like organizing food. I like uh, preparing our meals with these certain types of food. I like to have them in an emergency. And I don't know, it's just kind of an insurance to me. So I just feel better about whatever's going on whenever I have something put back. And so that's going to be on another video. Thank but thank you so much for joining us. And I hope you got a few examples on what you can prep. And I have plenty of videos on how we personally do our prepping. And so we will get to this closet clean out very soon. And thank y'all so much for joining us. And until next time, we'll see you on the next video. And remember, Jesus loves you. Bye-bye, friends.